After a day of absence, I'm back to bring you my review of week 3, day 1 of the Overwatch League 2019 season. On paper, the fixtures suggested we would see 4 competitive series, so let's see how each one went down. The third week kicked off like the second, with the Washington Justice raising the curtains once again, this time as they faced the Philadelphia Fusion, who had Boombox returning to the side. To put it bluntly, the first half of this series was not a very entertaining watch, at least in terms of the quality on display. To be fair to the Justice, they are improving on their free free compositions week by week, with their top performance this week, once again being Janus and Corey, but also Fuzzix, who impressed and outplayed Neptuno at the beginning in the Lucio in the matchup. However, their style of goats can best be described as passive, and most of their teamfight wins come only due to using multiple ultimates. Philadelphia, on the other hand, even with Boombox returning, looked really poor to begin with, and the one map loss to Washington was ugly, even in the kindest terms, as they unveiled a strange triple DPS composition that didn't seem to work. Sado in particular looks really uncomfortable on Reinhardt, leading to some to call for Fraggy to return to the lineup. With this problem apparent, it took until the third map, where Boombox and Carpe took over like week one. But Fusion really took hold of the series, eventually winning out 3-1. The result not a surprising one, but one which will concern Philly fans moving forward, as it appears that they can only find success when running Winston Goats. Seoul Dynasty faced the Boston Uprising in the second game of the day, and it was interesting to see that the analysts and casters expressed similar expectations about Seoul as I did, thus looking forward to seeing Michelle on Sombra played into a full strength 3 3 of Boston with fusions and color hex in the lineup. Instead, Seoul not only largely refused to play the Sombra, but played mirror matchups often, which became their undoing, with the Uprising consistently outperforming them on these occasions. With their full strength squad now active, the Boston Uprising returned to their week one form, and overall came out on top in the back and forth mind games with Seoul over the use of their ultimates, with better synergy and combinations of their ultimates finding success. The series ended somewhat flatteringly 3-1 to Boston, who honestly could have taken all four maps against the Dynasty, who returned in this game with a performance akin to their loss to the Fuel, where they would waste ultimates pushing aggressively in mirror matchups. Ryu J Hong in particular had a very poor game and would panic and use his transcendence too early to cover for the overaggression of his team, which left them vulnerable to Gravitons. Once again, Despite the highlight bomb plays, it was perplexing that they did not run Michelle more on Sombra, and it concerns me greatly that this is either warning signs of further coaching problems, or poor interior shot calling at work. The third match on day one of week three saw two improving sides face one another as the Florida Mayhem played the Guangzhou Charge. This series saw Apply and McGravy filling in for half of the maps for Tavik and Zephyr, and they both performed well. McGravy in particular stood out playing D.Va on Numbani, to a higher level than Zephyr was before him. The first map went the way of the charge, on the back of some crazy Widow and Anna play from Happy and Shu, who alongside the tanks of Hotbar and Rio, have been impressive pieces for this Guangzhou side so far this season. We went into halftime at one all, and it was clear that whilst both teams were playing the series competitively, some of the team fights themselves were at times a little messy. Florida picking up Numbani after only making it as far as halfway through point B, and the third map on Horizon, which went to Guangzhou, only contesting the first point. Similarly, on Rialto, the payload was also stopped rather early, from which Tavik brought out his now signature Payload May, whose ultimate proved deadly when used in combination with Zarya's Graviton, and led them to winning the map. Surprisingly, after a fun but messy series, we reach map 5, where in the end, the superior 3-3 free -free goats compositions of the charge proved just too polished for the mayhem to break down on Ilios, as they were narrowly edged out 3-2. The final game of the day saw the San Francisco Shock take on the Hangzhou Spark. From the outset, 
the shock looked far from their potential on control as they poorly managed resources and ultimates against the Spark early, who seemed to be improving upon their team synergy from last week and took the first map. It almost seemed as we headed into Hollywood that the two teams had actually swapped places from last week, as the shock only managed to first tick onto point A after a great defense by Hangzhou, but it seemed that this provided a catalyst for San Francisco moving forward. Despite twice being in 6v5 situations, the shock managed a clutch defense and full held the point to take us tied into the half. Once again, Bebeon Zenyatta continued to disappoint with poorly timed transcendences for the Spark, who subbed in revenge after the break. From here on out, the series spiralled more and more into the Shock's favour, as if they had taken the first couple of maps to warm up to their level that they showed last week. In the end, they held Changzhou at the first section of Route 66 to take the series 3-1, in which the Shock will be disappointed in their performance and the woes for the Spark continue. Now looking at my predictions, I started this week a lot better than last time as I finished 3-1. Although I predicted the scorelines correctly in the Philadelphia and San Francisco games, I was disappointed with their overall performances. The Mayhem put up a tougher fight than I imagined as they continued to grow, and if only Seoul would actually manage to play Sombra, they might have had a better chance of winning the series. As we head into Day 2, we have what looks to be an outstanding day of matches. The LA Gladiators kick us off in what should be an even series against the London Spitfire, before the Toronto Defiant look to defy the odds once more against the New York Excelsior. The Vancouver Titans face a trap game against a solid LA Valiant side looking for their first win, before we end the day with the exciting and unpredictable showdown between the Shanghai Dragons and the Chengdu Hunters. And with that, I'd like to thank you for watching. Expect reviews of the day's games for the rest of the week and check out my week 3 preview and predictions if you haven't already. Be sure to like and subscribe if you haven't for more daily Overwatch League content moving forward.